I'm going to be reading more from Spirit to help you relax and fall asleep. I hope you like it as much as I do. Please let me know. a nearby land. His kingdom was vast and rich due to their export of gold. Word traveled of his subterraneous arrival on their land. He insisted on meeting with Spectre to negotiate some trading options. Spectre agreed right away not wanting to miss out on this exciting opportunity. And he invited him that evening for dinner. It had been a long time since they met, and he had left an indelible impression on him. The spirit prepared herself for the dinner party. She bathed and washed her long hair, drying and curling the ends of it. Spectre interrupted her. There's someone important joining us tonight. I need you to be on your best behavior, he said. Who is it? she asked curiously. Emperor Eidolon, he said, and her heart skipped a beat. She had never met him before, but heard a lot about him. She wasn't dressed yet, her skin covered in goosebumps, as she searched her closet for something to wear. Spectre pulled out a dress for her. This is what I want you to wear, he said. It was a short black strapless dress with a cutout waist. She put the dress on, and he kissed her, massaging her bare waist. His large hands ran down her body, squeezing her, followed by a hard slap to her bottom. While they were upstairs, the party was beginning. Everything was ready. The outside was lined with guards, verifying each guest that arrived. There were half the number of people there that there was the night before. Everyone seemed cheerful, and the young new governor was nowhere to be seen. <sighs> Emperor Spectre made a grand entrance. His guests cheered and applauded to welcome him. Soon after, Emperor Eidolon arrived with some of his guards and his closest governors by his side. Spectre greeted him, and they exchanged pleasantries. He neglected to introduce a spirit to him. Idolin stared at her. She looked up into his beautiful brown eyes, and her heart fluttered. His body seemed perfect in the dim lights of the chandeliers. Spectre must have noticed that Idolin couldn't keep his eyes off of her. He stood in between them, shielding spirit. Then he guided Adolin to another part of the hall. She watched as they walked away. Then suddenly, they both turned to look at her. He must have asked about me, she thought, and her heart thudded. The specter made a face. She recognized that face. Something had upset. Then he called her over to them. Spectre introduced them. Idolin grabbed her hand and kissed it. A pleasure to meet you, spirit, he smiled, causing an immediate weakness all over her body. This was the first time Spectre had allowed any man to touch her. His blood must be boiling, she thought, and smiled. Do you like living with this guy? 
Yes, I do, she answered, her voice was quavering. I don't believe you, he laughed, then patted Spectre playfully on his shoulder. <sighs> she laughed, and her face turned a beautiful rosy color. Spectre looked upset, and his eyes were stone cold, but he managed to fake a laugh. During dinner, she caught Eidolon glancing at her several times. He smiled warmly at her, almost like his eyes were trying to tell her something. Both emperors drank, ate, and talked about politics. They discussed trading options. He had never reached a specific agreement towards the end of the night. Once most of the guests had gone home, Idolin started getting ready to leave also. He politely said goodbye to Spectre, resting his hand on his shoulder. Then they both shook hands. Then he turned to Spirit. He curled his hand under her back of her neck and it sent tinkles all over her body. I can't wait until we meet again, he said, and hugged her. She closed her eyes and felt her body weaken and melt into his. I don't think that'll be a problem, Spectre said, smiling. Hopefully we'll all meet again soon. Emperor Eidolon and his guards left, and she felt a stab of despair as she watched their car lights disappear. Then Spectre said, I hope I never have to see him again. I never really liked him. Spirit only nodded. She felt a tear slide down her face. She was glad that her long hair was partly covering her face at that moment. Later that night, Spirit lay in bed. She heard Spectre enter the room. He lay on top of her, and his lips brushed her skin while he pulled her hair back. She felt his warmth, and his soft, moist lips press against her chest, filling her with desire. He stopped to look at her, and he made her wait in agony, taking his time. He tied her wrist to the bed, because that's how he wanted her, and he began breathing hard. It felt very raw, and she was consumed with passion, but furious at the same time. She felt a sense of vulnerability while he indulged himself. She was craving him. She bit her bottom lip while grasping the bed sheets. Her pretty face strained as she craved more of him. <sighs> he paused again, making her wait. He looked excited by the torture this caused her. Her heart raced silently inside of her. Her skin was as hot as the midsummer day. Then, in a burst of pleasure, she felt him lose all control, but he commanded her not to, and she didn't. He untied her, then he lay in stillness for a moment, <sighs> wrapping his arms around her. She settled on his chest, 